Hallelujah. But God is good. Um, and he's worthy to be praised. We're talking about the process. The process. And we're in part four. And today uh, our lesson is going to come out of, our title is going to be Get in the Fight. Look at somebody and say, get in the fight. Get, get in, in the, the fight. fight. I don't know if you can fight or not, but you need to get in the fight. <laughs> if someone break into your house and about to take your life, what you going to do? I'm going to fight back. I don't know about you. I ain't going to sit there and try and beg for it. If they come with the intent of taking your stuff, if they come with the intent of destroying you, you got to put up a fight. Yes. See, the enemy ain't playing fair with you. He come ready to fight. Oh, Y'all want to back down. I come to fight. You got to fight for what you want. Amen. True. Okay. True. I guess I got some that want to not get in the fight. So our topic today is get in the fight. Tell somebody get in the fight. Get in the fight. Tell somebody else to get in the fight. Get in the fight. Maybe you need to tell a third person get in the fight. Get in the fight. Maybe one of those that you told will get in the fight with you. I need somebody to fight with me. You know what we called it? When I was in the world, it was a posse. Hallelujah. When you was going to fight, you found your posse. All right. you, were, you, you ain't going to pick anybody to come fight with you. All right. Anybody was a fighter in here. Anybody got in some fights before where yes, you can sir. fight or not? Because yes, you know sometimes we think we can fight. <laughs> but I, I know Amy could throw down. I, I heard some stuff about her. She could go. Hallelujah. But she wasn't going to go any kind of way. She was going to go and make sure she had somebody who had a backup. All right. Oh, come on. In case I get up overnumbered or, you know, overwhelmed, I got somebody to get in there and fight. Now, I'm willing to fight by myself, but it's always good to have somebody get in the fight with you. Yeah, right. Because nowadays, they don't play fair. No, oh, come on. They'll gang you up. They'll beat you down. Oh, yeah. I ain't going out there by myself. Hallelujah. That's why I'm taking the Lord with me. Amen. He never lost a fight. Amen. You got to have the right people on your side. Amen. Get in the fight. Tell somebody else, get in the fight. Get in the fight. We get in the fight today. I think we've been on the sideline too long. So, so before I start into my scripture, I want us to go to 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter, and verse 5 and 6. Yes, 5 and 6. Praise God. Because I, I want to show you there's, there's four types of people. Hey, hallelujah. Are you, are you messing with some stuff back there? Hallelujah. You're trying to perfect it. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. So uh, 1 Samuel 13, chapter, verse 5 and 6. Let's stand for the first verse. Then you may be seated. Hallelujah. And it reads, And the Philistine gathered himself together to fight with the Israel, with Israel, 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Mish Mishmash eastward from Bethlehem. Praise God. You may be seated. Verse 6. And when the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hid themselves in caves in thickets, and in rocks, and in high places, and in pits. Praise God for the reading of his word. So here in the scripture, I find that there are four types of people that when you are talking about a fight or getting in a fight, there are four types of people. All right. The first person you got to deal with is people in hiding. Mm. That's the one that want to hide in caves. What is a cave? It's a dark, lonely place. We got a lot of people come to church hiding in caves. They want to stay in a dark and lonely place because they don't want to get in the fight. Then you got people that are in thickets. That, you know, thinking would be a, a sticky place. That the people are very hurtful or easily get hurt. No matter what you say, they're always getting cut. Y'all know anybody like that? Right. Hallelujah. So sensitive. Always in your feelings. I guess I ain't talking to nobody in here then. <laughs> Hallelujah. They talking about me. Ain't nobody talking about you. Yeah, you talking about me. I saw the way you kind of look over there at me. <laughs> kind of look over there. I was looking at something else, but you just so happened to be in the way. 
But because you live or hide in that thicket, you live and hide in that sticky place, and that place is always cutting you, you easily put cut, you easily bruise, you easily offended. And so you don't want to get in the fight because you're always worried about yourself. Or you got people that are, are hiding in rocks. You know, rocks are right, hard and bitter places. Y'all know any hard and bitter people? Oh, come on. I got two amens off of that. Hallelujah. Everything is hard and bitter to them. They're they bitter about everything. Anybody who get a job, they mad at them. That's because right. they ain't got the job. That's Someone right. get a new car, they mad at them because they ain't got a new car in two years. Or they ain't had a new car in a month. They still mad. Praise God. Every time you tell something good, they get hard on you. Mm. So they're hiding in some hard and bitter places. Also, you got people that are in high places. Y'all know anybody who's snobbish? Yes. Lofty? Come on. They self-sufficient. Don't need God. Only thing they need is their own wisdom, their own knowledge. Mm, I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. And then you got the last type of person who hides in pits. That's that low place. They got low self-esteem. Oh, come on. Come on, you got to baby them all the time. That's why they get run over by people because they got low self-esteem. If you don't know who you are in God, the devil can walk all over you. I wish I could get an amen right there. Hallelujah, when you got low self-esteem, praise God, you will settle for anything. Come on, if I'm a single woman, I ain't taking no man without no job. I'm telling you that right now. I ain't single. But if I was, I'm going to tell you right now, you got to come to the table with something, too. Amen. Oh, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I know if we marry, we may fall on hard times at times. But I'm talking about if I'm single, I, I got a choice in the matter. I ain't going to pick you when you ain't got nothing. Amen. Oh, Jesus. I better preach right there for a moment. Because down in this low country area, hallelujah, the men's a love you doing tax season. When you done got your little six, seven, eight thousand, twelve, fifteen, twenty, whatever it is, I don't know. Hallelujah. But hey, after that money is gone, because it ain't going to take long for him to blow through your money. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Hey, that's all the time you find them is doing tax season. Or doing the wintertime when they're cold and need something to cut up against. Ooh, thank God for the rain. I hear the sound of a bunch of rain. I hope y'all win this all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so you got these people that are hiding in these pits. They're hiding in these low places. They don't want to deal with themselves. Hallelujah. So they let other people deal with them. Okay. They speak stuff into your life. They tell you who you are. Yes. Tell you you can't be nothing without them. The devil is a lie. Yes. Come on. I don't mean no harm, but... Uh, if I was a single well, a man, uh, hallelujah, and you ain't got no teeth in your mouth, you ain't going to be my wife. Now, if you got dentures, I can deal with that. Come here, I got to laugh about something. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, but when you got low self-esteem, you will settle for anything. No matter what that look like. Look like something just pull a cat, cat drag them in there. He ain't smiling at you when they want to. And he ain't even brushed that one. But he, oh, that's the most handsome thing I ever seen. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. But when you in that pit, when you in that low place, you see a pit. Oh, call the Holy Ghost, thank you. With, with a pit, a pit has to deal with stuff that drops to the bottom. So it don't settle for stuff on the top. It settles for stuff that drops down on it. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever rolls your way, whatever just falls into your hole, that's what you're happy with. That's one type of people. Then we got another type of people that get in the fight. It's the people that run away. Because the Bible tells us that uh, uh, when, uh, these, when they saw that, it was 30,000 chariots. And 6,000 horsemen. That's 36,000 right there. Yeah. But then the other part that really scared them was when they saw that the multitude was the size of the, what's the size of the, uh, the sand of the seashore. They couldn't number those people. Mm -hmm. 
See, y'all worrying about who's against you and forget about who's behind you. Who's on your side? Hallelujah. When I come to the fight, I don't worry about your numbers. Hallelujah. If I know I got the right posse with me, hallelujah, that's a matter about your numbers. So you got some folks that when the fight starts, they're ready to run. Hallelujah. I was watching, y'all ever watch Jack, Jack Reacher? And he said, you know, it's always two that's going to run when you get into a fight. Hallelujah. He said, all right, I got to figure out which one y'all are. Because there's five of them coming up against him. He says, three of y'all going to fight, two kind of, two going to fight, one half the way there, another two ready to run. I just got to find out which one. All right. So as soon as he hit the one, he don't want to be in the fight, the other two start running. All right. That's how we got. We got some people that talk real good. It's just like that little shawawa. Hallelujah. Just a yapping, yapping, yapping at the gate. Every day he passed by, that big dog passed by. He ain't say nothing, but a little chihuahua kept yapping, yapping, yapping. Because he knew the gate was locked. Mm -hmm. But one day, hallelujah, the master forgot to lock the gate. Yes. Oh, and he went right, yapping, yapping, yapping. Yap. He got out of that gate, and that gate came open. Ooh. Oh, that big dog's like, I got you now. <laughs> hallelujah, you talk real good. Hallelujah, when you're behind something secure. Yes. But what when you step out on your own? See, we could. Y'all got some Facebook bullies. Come on. Oh, y'all got some people that talk a lot of noise on Facebook. Right. Yeah, that's right. What they are doing, how they're doing, and all that. But you find them face to face. Uh, that wasn't me. Somebody else. <laughs> all right. Y'all talk some noise up here right now. But that's the second type of person. Then you got a third type of person. The people that follow you, but they're afraid or fearful. Come on. That's the plus you got there. Oh, uh, you know, I'm trying to get some numbers with me, but uh, I know you really ain't going to fight. But hopefully we have enough numbers we can back the other team down. All right. You ever had some people like that in your fight? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. They're with you, but they really don't want to be there. All right. Hallelujah. See, I had a best friend. Hallelujah. We was in college, and, and, and uh, he, he was the type that would get in a fight. don't care who it was. And since I was his best friend, I was kind of had to fight along with him. Even though I didn't want to fight at times. Oh, come on, y'all. Ain't like y'all always want to fight. Even if you can fight, you really don't want to fight. Because it might be your time to lose. <laughs> but he always got in the fight. So I always had to be ready. But I was following him. But I was following him afraid and fearful. So I had always got to have a word to try and talk him out of a fight. But sometimes you couldn't talk him out. So you had to go with it. And then there's this folk type of person, which brings us into uh, uh, 2 Samuel, I mean 1 Samuel, 14 chapter, verse 1. Hallelujah. You still, you still moving? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was good. Praise God. 14 and 1. It says, Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bared his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison that is on the other side, but he told not his father. So the folk type of person is the person that you need to tell someone right now. Say, pick a fight. Pick a fight. <laughs> That's the type of person you need in your corner. All right. pick a fight. Hallelujah. The one that will pick a fight. All right. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. Hallelujah. I don't need nobody who's weak back. I don't need nobody who, who's afraid. I need someone where to pick a fight. Why y'all waiting for the devil to come attack you? Come it's time for us to pick a fight. Come on. Amen. Oh, I got a couple people with me right now. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to pick a fight. Jonathan names means uh, 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 God gave or the Jehovah has given. Y'all missed that. If you got a name like that, you already got a name that wins. God already gave you the fight. God already gave you the victory. Only thing you gotta do is pick the fight. Oh, come on. How is that we can fight for our best friends and our family, but won't fight for our wedding, our marriage, our, our jobs, our family, our children? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're picking the wrong fight. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna fight for what really matters in my life. That ain't what I want good, Lord. <laughs> so let's move on down a little bit then. <laughs> Hallelujah. 14 and 1. And, and so Jonathan said, I'm going to pick a fight. But watch this. He didn't tell his father. Mm -hmm. 
You know why he told his father? Because his father was in a backslidden condition. Yes. Oh, what? Well, Y'all want to know how you define a backslidden condition? Come on. Usually a backslidden means that uh, they done got cold on God. Okay. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is they lukewarm in their zeal okay. towards God. Whatever they do, they kind of look warm, like, well, you know, I, I kind of kind of got something to do, or, you know, uh, if I do it, that's kind of, that's lukewarm. Mm -hmm. Or they are impatient in spirit. Oh, hallelujah. I yeah. thought y'all at least be right some of this down. <laughs> impatient in spirit. What you mean impatient in spirit? See, they're trying to work it out on their own before God shows up. Oh. So they're impatient in spirit. This backslidden now. Folk thing is, they're self-sufficient in their mind. They don't need to rely on nothing else but themselves. Mm -hmm. And then, film is, they are carnal in conduct. Yeah. What do you mean by carnal in conduct? That means that they do more worldly stuff than spiritual stuff. When you're in a backslidden condition, you ain't worried about church. You ain't worried about praising God. You ain't worried about reading your word. You ain't worried about fasting and praying. You're worried about, oh, time to party. Come on, it's time to go do this. You on every vacation all the time. Come on, you worry about carnal stuff. But you know what changes us when we're in that mind? Is when we go through a crisis, then we want to come to Christ. I said, when you come in a crisis, then you want to come to Christ. And the sixth one is, you fearful of your future. Come on. Because when you're walking with God, he'll reveal your future to you. Oh, y'all talking hallelujah, Thank praise you. God. So there's six things, cold to God, lukewarm in zeal, impatient in spirit, self-sufficient in your mind, carnal in your conduct, and fearful of your future. And that's how Paul or Saul was. Here, in, in case y'all ain't ready yet, y'all go back and study the data, that in chapter 14, we find Saul, in 13 and 14, we find Saul trying to find a priest to see whether it's all right to go fight. Now, Jonathan up here making a rackets. He up there making a fuss. He up there making a the noise. He up there uh, encountering the enemy. He up there picking a fight. Hallelujah. We got a lot of people sitting on the sideline while the people for God are really in the fight. Yeah. Yeah. And you say my word whether you should fight or not. Yes, sir. Right. If you see me fighting and we're fellows uh, in the same fellowship, Let's you go. should be fighting with me. Let's go. Yes, sir. It's just like the family. You don't sit around on your family and watch someone beat your family down. You jumping in the fight. Amen. Even if you can't hit hard. Throw a shoe or something. Got something in there. Uh, yeah. Waiting some kind of way. At least they'll see me swinging. <laughs> Might have hit nothing but air. Hallelujah. But I'm in the fight. Hallelujah. You know how later on after y'all don't got in the fight, y'all want to talk about your victory? Do you, oh, did you see my swing? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I said, see my swing. I ain't hit nothing. I swung, though. Well, I put it all in there. Hallelujah. I was trying to cool you off in that swing. And so, therefore, you're picking the fight. But watch this. Because he was in that backslidden condition, he was trying to find out from the Lord, should he go in the fight? And the Lord already done dealt with him. Look, he done put it on your heart. He put it on Jonathan's heart in, in verse 1. And he said, look, he told us, I'm a bear. See, God always has somebody in your corner willing right. to fight with you. All right. Oh, come All right. on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you don't have nobody in your corner, you need to change your corner. Okay. Right. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. There's nobody who's willing to fight for your dream. There's nobody who's willing to fight for you. You need to get another corner. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Y'all know in the boxing ring, they're, they're in the opposite corners. Uh -huh. And in the opposite corner, they all got people in that corner that's for them. Yes. That when they're getting bruised up, they're encouraging them. They're giving them a little water. Stay in there. Hang in there, brother. Yes. You want to overcome this thing. Yes, yes sir. Mm. Mm. Okay. Come on. Come on. I'm almost there. Praise Thank God. So let's drop down. Verse 6. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It says, Jonathan said unto the young man that bear his armor, Come, let us go over unto the garrison of the uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord, oh, look at that. It may be that the Lord will work for us, uh -huh. for there is no restraint. Ah, come on. There is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by a few. Jesus. What do you mean? Hallelujah. We don't know what God is going to do. Yeah. See, sometimes we wait on a big number in order to move for God. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
God's away two or three, touch as to agree. I just need somebody who have a heart like me. Yes, sir. If you know the spirit of this ministry, fight yes, quick. Hallelujah, don't wait for me to do all the fighting by myself. There's no restraint. There's no restraint to the Lord. Whether he's saved by a little or saved by a lot. Okay. And John will say, hey, it might be that day he saved with a little. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready to test the Lord. Wow. I'm ready to walk out in faith. Jesus. Okay, all right, all right. Verse 7. He said, watch this. And his armor bearer, praise the Lord for an armor bearer. He, and his armor bearer said unto him, do all. What? That is in thy heart. Turn thee, behold. Come on. I am. With. Come on, y'all ain't saw that. God with thee. Y'all know I am that I am. Yeah. I am with thee. According to thy heart. In other words, he said, look here, John. You go in that fight, I'm fighting with you. Hallelujah. God is on your side. I'm on your side yes, too. Lord. Yeah. See, I'm willing to fight with you if you got God with you. Right. Hallelujah, because I know it's a fixed fight. Yeah. I don't like to lose. Right, I'd rather my fight be fixed. Yes. And when God is on your side, I'm on your side too. Because I don't want to find myself on the opposite corner fighting against God. Okay, 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 okay. So he said, do all that is in our heart. I am with thee. In other words, he am with you in crisis. See, you need to find people that will be with you in a crisis. Yes. Not a person that will want to flee on you when a crisis occurs. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Come on, that's how you find out your, your BFF. Mm -hmm. Come on, your ride or die. Come on, Come on, that's when you truly find out. You don't discover yourself until you're in a fight. That's right. How? Oh, Y'all don't want to talk right Come on, come on. Uh, there's a scripture that's going to come up that shows you first. Go to verse 8, praise God. That says I'm going there already. He said, it didn't say, Jonathan, behold, we will pass over unto these men. And we will what? Discover. Come on, say it again. We will what? Discover. That means reveal. Hallelujah. We reveal ourselves unto them. In other words, you want to discover who you really are yes. in the fight. Yes. Come on. You don't really know your script until you're actually in the fight. That's right. Jesus, thank you. Come on, you ever fought someone who you knew or thought could beat you? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you didn't discover yourself, hallelujah, until you was bring it out, hallelujah. Until you was in the fight. Yeah, oh, just bring me another mic. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good. Good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So here, when you're in that fight like that. You discover, or it will be revealed to you, your script and your weakness. Mm -hmm. I got in a fight with someone that went bigger than me, mm -hmm. and I was a little fearful, but hallelujah, I overcame my fear. All right. I ain't had too much of a choice because he was swinging. Oh. <laughs> hallelujah. But I, I began to use some wisdom, Mother May. I saw him dipping, All right. and he kept dipping like this. So I start rocking with him, baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he dip, I pop. All right. <laughs> and because he dip into my pop, it popping down. All right. Oh, hallelujah. It was a one, a one punch fight. Right. I promise you to God, it was a one punch fight. I hit him, he hit the ground, and it was over. All right. He 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 kind of fall down in slow motion. <laughs> he was here and he stopped backing up. Boop, boop, boop. I, I, maybe I was just high. <laughs> and he was falling in slow motion. <laughs> but I knew he ain't got up. <laughs> he hit that ground. Oh, boom, boom, boom. And he, he fell. We had a whole crowd around us. Right there on Flat Street. Right in front of old Fred. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. When he finally got up, he started that thing again. But I done put some fear in him. Because I hit him the first time, I start that jab again. All of a sudden, he said, you know what we've done. Amen. Hallelujah. See, Amen. the enemy, you don't know your script uh, until you get in the fight and you discover yourself. Amen. I thought that he was bigger than me. He was a Marine. I was Army. You know how Marines and Army go. The Marines think they're better than Army. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I thank God I overcame because I discovered myself in the fight. 
If you never get in a fight, you never know who you are. That's right. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, I'm almost finished. Go to verse uh, 9. Hmm. So he say, if they say thus unto us, tarry until we come to you, then we will stay still in our place and will not go up unto them. In other words, they say, well, the devil ain't going to mess up. We're going to leave him alone right now. But watch verse 10. Because I come to tell you today, you got to take the fight to your enemy. He said, but if they say thus, come unto us, then we will go up. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand. And this shall be a sign unto us. Hallelujah. In other words, you need to tell someone what you're waiting on. You need to take the fight to the enemy. Why are we let them have the enemy? Don't you realize when the enemy is coming to attack you, he has the advantage because you ain't prepared for the fight. But when you're going to fight someone, you are not playing us up. That's right. You got a strategy going forward. The enemy has a strategy when he comes to you. So why don't you go to him first with your strategy? Amen. Amen. I ain't going to wait till my children are lost and don't know God. I'm going to fight for them now. Hallelujah. Before they get to that age when they want to wander off. Yes. 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 Let me help you all out. The Bible tells us that Job laid up an offering unto the Lord for his children because his children went down there and gathered together to a little party. And he said, in case they sin, let me raise up this offering unto you. See, he didn't wait till they do it. He did it beforehand. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. We're waiting for the enemy to attack, and then we counterattack. Yeah. Hallelujah. That might work yeah. sometimes, but that shouldn't be your whole strategy. That's right. Sometimes you got to take that, that fight to them. Yeah. You got to initiate it. Yeah. I'm fighting for what I believe in. Yeah. I'm fighting for what I want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take the fight to the enemy. Yeah. All, right, all right, all right. I got three more. I'm almost finished. Watch this. Verse 11. Ooh, this is good right here. And both of them discover themselves. Shout hallelujah right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. Not only the one leading, but the one following begin to discover himself. Hallelujah. Because usually when someone in front of you, you get scripted from them. You see how they are fighting, and then you adapt to them. You are just with them. Yes. See, good leaders inspire others. Yes. Watch this. He said, discover unto themselves, unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines say, behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. Y'all ain't caught that yet. See, in other words, I come today to tell you to come out of your hiding place. Okay. Come out of those holes you're hiding in. You remember those holes I talked about earlier? Those rocks, those thickets? Huh? Hallelujah. Those things I was telling you about, you need to come out of those things. That's a place you're hiding in. Or you done ran away. Or you're afraid, afraid and falling in fear. In case you missed this, the enemy knows where you are. Yes. Y'all yes. <laughs> caught that? Yes. Watch this. He said, both of them discovered themselves into the gas on the Philistine. And the Philistine said, behold, the Hebrew come forth out, out of the holes where they had hid themselves. Mm -hmm. So the enemy knew where they was hiding there. Oh, yes. mm. If the enemy know where you are, right. you really ain't hiding. You in the now. Oh, he just ain't messing with you because he already know he got you. That's right. No, that, well, yeah. How do you, oh, do? you ain't putting up no fight, so he don't need to mess with you. Jesus. It's usually when you start fighting for something, he comes up and attack you. Oh, yeah. right. When you start making changes in your life, yeah. that's when he start coming yeah. after you. Yeah. Oh, hell start breaking yeah. loose. One thing I know when someone's about to bring about deliverance or salvation in their life or change in their life, all of a sudden all hell break loose around them. All the time. Yes. Trying all to the get time. them to stay where they are. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. But the devil is a lie. He's a liar. You know where I'm at, but that's why I'm coming after you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm coming out of hiding. Tell someone I'm coming out of hiding. Amen. And I'm taking the fight to you. I'm taking the fight to you. All right, move on, move on. Come on, I got to get down to the last one. Hallelujah. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you a thing. Come on, look at that. They're all bold and brass. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. You got to watch a uh, 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 matrix. Yes. Uh -huh. 
we, 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 uh, we, we, uh, what you call say? When you about to fight it. Y'all know what nature it is. Neo Fade. How look, Neo Fade, come on. Or, or, or what's the other one name? Mor Mor Morpheus. Morpheus said, come on. After they ever got in the fight, and he done hit him a couple times, and they're away, he's like, come on. Okay. That what the enemy is telling him, come on. Right. You weak, you hiding in holes. You ain't ready for me. But see, here's what I come to tell you is that he has underestimated you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, he's already at a disadvantage. Because he's underestimating you. And doesn't know that you got your posse with you this time. The last time you fought, it was a thick fight. You won that one. I, I wasn't, I didn't have the right uh, tools with me. I didn't have the right posse with me. But now I got God on my side. That's right. Watch this. He said, come up to us and we will show you a thing. And John is saying to his armor bear, come on, buddy. I, I feel a little confidence right now. Mm -hmm. The background story to with Jonathan had, Jonathan already done slew a couple thousand people already. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He already fought the Philistine before. So God will give you a private battle before he take it to a public one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, I wish I had a shot right yes, there. God. There's some things he'll allow you to do at home. There's some things he'll allow you to do in secrecy before he bring you out in public. Yes, yes, yes. Because you about to represent him. Oh, Lord, hold it, hold it, yes, hold it yes. right now. Hallelujah. It's like a boxer. He has to be in training in public, in private before he go to his public match. He put in all that time in that workout. Nobody see him sweating. Nobody see him praying. Nobody see him fasting. Nobody see him reading his word until he step out in the public. See, now once you step out in the public, you represent who, who market you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, God is behind you. God say, try him. Come on. I got his back. I, hey, 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 hey. I know he's going to win. Thank you. And so in other words, God's reputation is at stake. Yes. All right. All right, watch this. And John is saying to him, Mama Bear, come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hands of the Israel. Hallelujah. If y'all don't get nothing else, learn how to praise your way up. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Go ahead and prophesy to your promise. Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, I told y'all before, between your Alpha and Omega, between your, uh, uh, your promise, mm, between your prophecy and your promise, there's a fight. Right. And so you got to learn how to talk to your promise. Hallelujah. He began to talk to his promise and say, he has already delivered us. He has already set us free. Hallelujah. It's already in his hand. God has already delivered him. Yes. See, when you don't know who you are, you will talk cowardly. I don't think we're going to win. I don't know. There's, there's too many of them. We can't fight. We can't win. We can't win this fight. But Jonathan say it's just two of us, and we're going up against thousands. But yet still, he's speaking deliverance, yes. not defeat. Yes. <laughs> Somebody say he's speaking deliverance. Speaking deliverance. And not defeat. And not defeat. Oh, hallelujah. All right, come, hallelujah. On, come on, come on. Come on, one more, come on. Keep, 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 keep going. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And Jonathan climbed up his hand and upon his feet, and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer slew after him. In other words, whatever Jonathan missed, his armor bearer got it. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. That, that's when you know you got the right posse. Hallelujah. You might be fighting the strongest one here, and someone about to hit you in the back of your head. Hallelujah. But your armor bearer come and block that one for you. Yes, sir. Right. I need someone to back me up. Yes, sir. I need someone on my side. Yes, we can't fight this fight by ourselves. Yes, sir. That's when, let's use the example of a married couple. A married couple need to learn to pray together so the enemy don't come in and divide them. That's See, he want to keep us divided so we can't fight together. Yes, sir. See, when two will become one, that means we got each other back. That's it. Glory. But when we stop praying, all of a sudden we start fighting each other. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. And that's what the enemy want is division. That's what he want. And so, therefore, he said, look here. Whatever you fighting up front, I got whatever coming behind. Whatever you let slide through, that's for me. In other words, a pastor needs some people, hallelujah, that are going to fight with him. I ain't asking you to fight the principality, but I'm, I am asking you to get some of them demons on the side. Oh, come on. There are certain things we are called to fight. See, you don't say, you got to send special force 
here against special forces. You don't send in regular army against special forces. That's right. <laughs> you don't send them in against the elite. Right. It'd it be foolish of me to send you in into a fight and you barely know how to pre yourself out of people's bag. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on right there. Hallelujah. Right there. I don't need you trying to fight no principalities. Hallelujah. When well, you barely getting out of bed. You have a headache you've been fighting for the longest. You ain't overcome that yet. Y'all don't want to talk right there. Hallelujah. But watch this. Go to verse 14. And after the first slaughter with Jonathan and his armor bear made was about 20 men. Two against 20. Within as it were and half an acre of land with a yoke of oxen and a mighty plow. The background of this is that Jonathan was the only one with a sword, him and King Saul. The Philistine had came in and raped the land of Israel and took all that smith. The smith is a blacksmith. Blacksmith make your swords and your spears. They make your stuff out of iron. They took all of them to back to, uh, to uh, the Philistine and they had no way to make any plows, make any spears, make any bows, make any swords. So they had to fight with whatever they had. See, when you on God, when God on your side, he'll give you a supernatural victory. Yes, you worry about what you got in your hand. God worry about what you got in your heart. Yes, Hallelujah, because it started off with Jonathan had in his heart. All right, go on. With a yoke of oxen, a mighty plow. Verse 15, I'm almost there. And there was a trembling in the host. Did y'all catch that? There was a trembling in the host, in the field, and among all the people. Two people putting all these people and putting fear in them. Come on. The garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled. And the earth quaked, so it was a great, very great trembling. In other words, Jonathan over there making a big noise. He was in such a fight that everybody in town came out to look. Oh, man, what's going over there to renew faith international ministry tonight? They're making, a, they're making a ruckus over there today. Yeah. They're putting up a fight over there today. I heard them demons on a holler. I heard them demons screaming. Oh, y'all want to talk right here. Hallelujah. I, I guess I'm going to have to find me some armor bearers. Hallelujah. Watch verse 16. I'm almost there. And the watchmen of the soul of Gibeah, of, G of Benjamin, look, and behold, the multitude melted away. And they went on beating down one another. How about the enemy turning on himself? How about the enemy beating the fight? Jesus. What won't God do? What y'all got us into? Uh, <laughs> y'all got in a fight with someone, and other birds start jumping on themselves because they're like, why you brought me in this thing? We getting whooped. I should beat you. Turn on. They start turning on themselves. Mm. Only thing you had to do is get in the fight. Verse 17. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Watch this. Then say Saul unto the people that were with him. Remember now. And see who is going from us. See, Saul don't even know what's going on. He don't even know his own son out there fighting for his kingdom. My God. Hallelujah. In other words, this title of this thing should have been fight for the kingdom. Right. Oh, come on. Y'all don't want to talk right there. Jonathan was the son of Saul. Saul was the king. So he was fighting for the kingdom. Yeah. Y'all miss it. In other words, what you're fighting for now is not for you. It's for the king. Watch this. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. All right, we now know who's, who's causing this ruckus now. I know who over there fighting now. I know why we're having trouble right now. Because they're over there fighting some demons. Watch verse 18. And Saul said to Ehi, bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at the time with the children in. See, they don't got religious. He was backslidden. He trying to go into a religious mode now. Uh -huh. Come, on. Come on, let's have a prayer meeting right about now. We need to find what's going on. The fight is taking place. Your son, you already know, is in the fight. Go, go fight up. with him. I ain't got to know the details of the story. Sometimes you just got to get in the fight. Yes, sir. Verse 19, watch this. Praise God. And it came to pass my soul talking to the priest that the noise that was in the host of the Philistine went on and increased. All right. And Saul said unto the priest, what trouble man? What boy get off of me right now? Hallelujah, let's fight. Somebody's about to get some glory. I got to get in this thing too. Yes, sir. In other words, some people are going to come along once you start becoming victorious. Some people ain't going to join the fight until they see you win. 
Oh, come on. Hallelujah. And then they're going to act like they was on your team the whole time. Yeah, but yeah, they worked. They just didn't know it. Hallelujah. Don't knock them. Don't knock them because they're on your team. They just didn't know it at the time. But you have inspired them. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. You have motivated them with your faith. So you should be encouraged by that. See, sometimes we hate on people that rise up with us that wasn't there at the beginning. But you inspire them to join your team. Yes, sir. Don't knock them down later because they join your team. Yes, I ain't talking about the one that wait till victory time come. When y'all y'all singing Jubilee going home and then come out of the woods and join in and start singing along. No, I'm talking about one that actually put at least threw a punch. Yeah. <laughs> Lee swung at you. Watch this. He said, withdraw your hand. In other words, I got to let go of this religious mode. Go to verse 20. And Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came to the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his fellow. And there was a very great discomfort. Watch verse 21. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistine, hold up. There are some people that already went over to the enemy side that are supposed to be on your side. They're going to turn around right now. So you got some people that will switch on you. It all depends on when you're winning or not. Girl, I'm going to tell you like this here. That man ain't no good. Then all of a sudden, that man changed. Girl, I told you that man was good for you the whole time. They'll swap on you. They'll change on you. How? Yes, yes. Oh, watch this. He said, which went out with them into the camp. For the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. See, Saul and got on board. Hallelujah. And Jonathan had inspired the whole nation to fight. In other words, this was the beginning of a rebellion against the Philistines. In other words, this was their independence day. I wish someone would have caught that in their spirit. Because yeah. today could be your independence day. Yeah. This could be the day you rebel. This could be the day you say, enough is enough. This is the day you get into a fight. This is the day you put up a fight. This is the day you want to overcome. This is the day you want to be victorious. Yeah. All right, two more scriptures and we're there. Praise God, watch this. Go to verse uh, 22. He said, likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in the mount... Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also fall hard after them in battle. Mm -hmm. Your action will empower others to join the fight. Y'all yes. yes. wonder why all is going on? It's because nobody jumping in the fight to empower others to fight. We had a, a, a men's uh, luncheon yesterday, praise God. Awesome. I apologize, Samuel, for awesome. not telling you about it. Um, Hallelujah, that we had young men and young boys. Um, and we brought some along. And I apologize to all of y'all, actually, if I didn't invite you, your, your child to come along. Um, but it was men and boys. And what we were doing was uh, we was doing a luncheon to come together so that we could teach our young men how to be men. Mm -hmm. And let them see us for men. Yes. And so as an armor bearer, your young people are looking up to you. They are watching and observing you, whether you know it or not. You know, when I was small, I watched my, my, my mom and dad, uh, you know, a little, what do you say? It wasn't uh, a Pat's Blue Ribbon. They still sell, sell, sell that? Pat's Blue Ribbon? That little blue ribbon on it came? It was beer, in case y'all don't know. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't know. That was way back in the day. But as a child, I saw this. And so we are watching our parents. We are watching our, our mentors. We are watching those who we call in leadership. We are watching them and observing them. And whatever they're doing, we want to emulate it. Yes. I done told y'all the story where around my uh, grandparents' porch was these liquor bars. Mm -hmm. And when they was not out there, us kids, you know, cousins, it was, you know how cousins is, all of them come to grandma's house. And we would get the little bottles and find the little corners in them. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Thank God for deliverance. 
deliver my mind right now just thinking about what I was drinking. Hallelujah. Well, we're trying to act like them. Sit there, sit on the pot. Oh, yeah. And you know, we'll emulate the one that was drunk, the one that took more sips than the other one. Y'all know y'all always got the one that drank more and pee less? Yes. Never mind. Praise God. But we'll emulate based on what we see. And so you might be speaking one thing, but your action is saying something totally different. Yeah, that's, good. that's why the armor bearer said, whatever's in your heart, I'm with you on that. Because whatever in your heart, you want to proceed after. You want to pursue. And lastly, last verse. Look at someone's last verse. Last verse. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. So the Lord saved. What? Hold on, I thought it was Jonathan. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto Bethlehem. In other words, of course, Jonathan started it, but it was the Lord that landed on his heart. Because right. the Lord put it in his heart. Don't worry about how many people coming up against you. Don't worry about how you are outnumbered. Don't worry about how big your adversary is or your enemy is. Hallelujah, I'm on your side. Yes. If you will follow me, I'll take you from your alpha to your omega. God started the fight in him. And God's going to finish the fight in him. Yeah. Hallelujah. I just dropped by today to tell you to get in the fight. Look at somebody and say, get in the fight. Get in the fight. There's no need to be fearful anymore. Get in the fight. Hallelujah. You don't need to hide in your thickets no more. Get in the fight. You don't need to hide in your caves anymore. Get in the fight. You don't need to hide behind rocks. Get in the fight. Yes, God. And y'all need to come out of them pits. Come on. And get off them high places. Yeah. Under yourself before the mighty hand of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you can't do this without God. Yeah. How many of y'all tried it without him? Be honest. Yes, how, how did it work? Not it, it, it didn't work at all. Not Got her terrible and horrible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Miserable on the inside. Ooh, but thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I came to my righteous mouth. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, once you trans transition over to the Lord, it ain't going to be easy, but it will be victorious. No fight is really easy. Hallelujah. If it's a fight, it ain't easy. You can sneak on somebody, it ain't no fight. You just knock somebody out. But you get in a fight, it ain't easy. Praise God. But you know you're going to be victorious. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, Amen. pick a fight. Pick a fight. Pick a fight. Remember, no weapon Form. formed against you shall, shall, shall prosper. Shall prosper. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Amen. Y'all don't realize, Jonathan got that concept before they even quoted that scripture. <laughs> no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. So all that stuff was forming in your cave, in your thickets, in your high places, in your pits, in your low places, in your cave, in your rocks. All those things was forming a weapon against you. Right. Guess what? They shall not prosper. Right. God will give you power to overcome it. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm living proof God can give you power to overcome those places you was in. Yes. If not, I'll still be at the pool. All right. Hallelujah. And some of y'all still wouldn't, you wouldn't be here today on the Sunday. Y'all still been laying up from last night. Amen. Jesus. I ain't just talking about sex. Some of y'all just been drunk. <laughs> hung over. Or both hung over and laid up. <laughs> I mean, we've been there. Some of us been there. Thank you. Don't act like you, you, you ain't never sinned in there. You've been there. Hallelujah. But thank God for Jesus. He delivered us and brought us out. Thank you, And we thought we'd done something when we did come to church. Mm -hmm. wow. come on. Hallelujah. Come on. But what happened when your heart changes? Oh, Glory be to God. Yes. And my closing is this. Get in the fight. That's all you got to do is get in the fight. And the Lord will fight your battles. They went up, but I know they had angels beside them. There's a scripture that talks about 
this one guy, he was a prophet armor bearer. And he was looking down and he, and he saw the great multitude of people. And the prophet said, it's more on our side than on their side. He said, what are you talking about? So he prayed to the Lord. He said, open up his eyes so he may see. And he opened up the eyes and he saw all these chariots of fire surrounding them. See, there's things on the unseen side that's working for your faith. Quit basing stuff Amen. on the seen side, on the natural Amen. side, Amen. on the physical side Amen. of things. Amen. God got this thing working for your favor. Yes. He about to turn it around for you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So while you're standing on your feet, position, give us up.